Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe Analysis video. In the last video, I went over the recently revealed Japanese website for the game, alongside a bunch of brand new information that was revealed, new footage, new copy abilities, all that sorts of stuff. If you missed that video, please go check it out before this one. But if you're here for the ride, then today's video will be discussing my final hopes and wishes for the game. Return to Dreamland is personally one of my favorite games of all time, so the fact that it's getting remade is kind of a big deal for me. There have been aspects that I've wanted for a theoretical remake of the game for a while. So today I'm going to go over my final hopes and wishes for the game on what they might have in store for us just as a surprise feature. A lot of the game has already been revealed, and I'm gonna go over that here in brief detail. Quickly, I'm gonna go over aspects the remake has already presented that I've been wanting. So if you wanna skip over that section, then head to the timestamp shown on screen right now, as that will detail my actual final hopes and wishes. And I'm gonna preface before the video starts, spoilers for Return to Dreamland and Forgotten Land. Just so you're aware, because I will discuss like end game, final boss, post game stuff, just in case you haven't played those games yet. That's your warning. And without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So starting off with the aspects in which they've already presented to us, I'm going to start off with a change in graphics. The original Return to Dreamland ran at 720p 60 frames on the Nintendo Wii, but here in the brand new version for the Nintendo Switch, upgraded on modern day platform, it runs at a smooth resolution of 1080p 60fps, one of, I don't want to say the only games on the Nintendo Switch that runs at this frame rate or resolution, but it's definitely one out of a handful that do run at a solid required resolution. There have been many games on the Switch that don't run at this quality, that really should, but the Switch is just not that optimized. So it's really nice to see Return to Dreamland's remake actually run at this solid resolution state. There are smoother animations or brand new animations to old ones that replace them and make them look better. A lot of the characters' animations in-game, in terms of moving and just attacking in general, seem to have been updated to match the new frame rate and resolution respectively, or they've replaced them in favor of brand new animations, which give a nice flair to the game. Water is a good example of these. We've only seen the opening cutscene of the game, but it seems that there have been updated cutscenes to match the new resolution, obviously. The footage we've seen from the opening cutscene is a great example of this, as we can see a lot of the new changes they made to just everything, like the surroundings, the characters, the animations, and speaking of the characters, updated player models. It may be hard to tell on Kirby, but most if not all of the other characters in the game have received updated player models that match according to the new resolution. King Dedede's model has been entirely revamped, now using his Forgotten Land model, or something along the lines of the Forgotten Land model. I know it's not the same as his previous model from the original game, or from Triple Deluxe, or Star Allies, but this model is very much akin to Kirby 64's design, which I know was used in Forgotten Land. So it's nice to see this new spin on DDD despite them having to remake his appearance every so often. And lastly, in regards to graphics, the backgrounds look even more detailed than what they already were. Last year I uploaded a retrospective on Return to Dreamland, and there was a small portion in that video in which I was discussing and I guess raving about the backgrounds in that game, as they are just so unnecessarily detailed for what they are. As when you're playing the game, you kinda just bypass through these sections very fast, so you don't really get the opportunity to take a look and admire the backgrounds. And obviously they've done it again in the remake, and these backgrounds look even more detailed than what they already were. I don't know, I just like looking at the backgrounds, it's nice. Moving along, we have new copy abilities, being Mecha and Sand. These both bring a couple of brand new features into the table. We don't really know the strength or power of these copy abilities yet, but in terms of design-wise, Mecha looks fantastic. I'm a sucker for robots and just Mecha designs in general, so this ability I know is already going to be one of my favorites going forward. And Sand seems like an ability that we should have had a really long time ago. So it's nice to see that Hal's bringing more elemental abilities into the picture, like Sand. I'm sure they'll both play fine, but Mecha's definitely going to be the most popular out of the new two. DDD, Meta Knight, and Bandanity all got their updated movesets from Star Allies and Fighters 2, which is a great change. I stated this in my previous video, but originally their movesets were kind of just like clones or replications of their respective copy abilities, which were Hammer, Sword, and Spear, but now they're receiving their updated movesets that were in both of these games that fully flesh out the idea of their character and their copy ability. There was a commenter who made this point in my previous video, but some of the moves that they presented in the new footage are old moves that were in the original game that I never really picked up on, but there are still aspects to their moveset 
that are brand new, and they're advertised like that as well. On the new website and on their Twitter, they are advertised as, like, brand new, updated movesets. Not all the attacks are new, as they were, you know, from the respective copy ability, but comparing the original movesets of these characters to the ones in Star Allies and Fighters 2, there are drastic differences. But overall, it's just really refreshing to see these characters get their movesets upgraded. And finally, there's Mary Magaland. The very idea of this area existing is brilliant, despite it being a little strange for existing. Having a collection of 11 subgames compared to the game's initial two is amazing to have, plus the fact that they're all mostly returning subgames from previous Kirby games. They're really trying to push this game's multiplayer, which is super, super good. And having this collection of subgames will definitely push that factor forward. It's just unfortunate that there's no online multiplayer aspect, as I think the game's multiplayer would would greatly benefit from it, just like how 3D World Deluxe's multiplayer was done online. And that concludes the overview of the previously announced information, so now we're going to move on to my final hopes and wishes for the game. First, I want to talk about the potential of hidden super copy abilities. As much as there may not be a possibility for them to hide more newer copy abilities, since they already revealed two, we may see some hidden supers. They've already gone their way to market Mecha and Sand a lot for this game's campaign, so I don't think we're gonna see any more new copy abilities. As much as there may not be a possibility for them to hide more new copy abilities, due to the fact that the game's marketing campaign has already covered Mecha and Sand a lot, maybe we'll see some hidden supers? Super Cutter and Super Spark are already in the original game's files that go completely unused. Super Cutter has a model for it, specifically the hat that Kirby wears during the animation transformation, but we don't see anything in terms of animation, ability usage, or the works for both abilities. There's a possibility that they will hide something though, so we could see these there. To prove that there's actually a possibility they'll hide something, in Forgotten Land, they hid two unlockable ability upgrades, being Masked Hammer and Morphonite Sword for post-game unlocks. These were not in the marketing campaign for the game, obviously, as they are post-game rewards, but my point still proves that they are hidden post-game unlockables, or even late-game unlockables, which this game could still pull. There also exists an unused texture for a clock and super clock copy ability respectively. Obviously, this copy ability has not been revealed alongside Mecha and Sand as the new copy abilities, so I'm not really picturing the idea of it appearing as a hidden copy ability. If I were to have some ideas for this copy ability, if it were to exist, there's a chance it could be a scream up ability like Mike or Crash, but my personal favorite theory that I came up with is that if this ability does exist, it could work kind of similarly to how Time Crash works in Forgotten Land. The way Time Crash works, it's an upgrade to the Crash copy ability. But what happens is that time slows down around you in an area that surrounds Kirby. From here, you can interact with enemies, be it normal enemies, sub-bosses, bosses, and deal massive damage as you would normally with Crash. But the main attribute to this ability, besides the time slow effect, is that if you hit another enemy, the duration of the ability extends, meaning that you can chain the Crash attacks and the slow effect. So if Clock did exist, it may work similar to that, or even Super Clock would have that same function. That's my personal theory. I would really love to see this ability actually come to fruition. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen. Next on the list is a playable Magalore, and I know that this feature has been wanted for a while. I think more recently it's being requested that this actually be a thing for the remake. Magalore has a fully fleshed out moveset that was introduced in Star Allies and in Fighters 2, just like DDD, Meta Knight, and Bandanity. They gave Magalore a moveset, so why isn't he included, you know? I'm not entirely certain what the unlock conditions could be if this does exist, or when you would unlock him per se. If so, it would definitely have to be in post-game for sure, as it would just work well with the context of the game. I know I gave a spoiler warning at the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna bring it up again. Spoilers for Return to Dreamland, Maglor is the plot twist villain of the game. He is the final boss. So for him to just be playable, like, off the get-go, and face a clone of himself, it doesn't really add up to the context of the game. And I understand it's Kirby, it's not, you know, the most enriching story. To form a coherent story for the player, they would save Magalore to be playable after you beat him. Maybe you could unlock him as a reward for 100% clearing your save file, as the game definitely wants to remind you about that sake of 100% completion on boot up. 
In order to receive this, that means that you have to collect all 120 energy spheres in story and in EX mode, you have to clear every level in the game, you have to beat the final boss, and you have to complete all of the ability challenge rooms. Or maybe he could be a reward for beating the true arena? In the original, there was no real incentive to beat the true arena outside of just the sake of completion. Forgotten Land now rewards you with trophies, stars, and a couple of other things that I can't really remember off the top of my head. But regardless, the true arena or the ultimate cup Z in that game did reward you with something upon completion. So maybe it would be a playable version of Magalore in this game. And speaking of the true arena, we're going to move on to the next topic here being the true arena and changes they could possibly make to the true arena. For starters, the name could be changed to ultimate cup or ultimate cup Z to fit alongside Forgotten Land's naming scheme, which I mentioned in the previous video. Obviously, if there are any new sub-bosses or new bosses to the deluxe version in general, we will definitely be seeing them here. So far, we haven't seen any new bosses of any shape, but I have a strange feeling that we may have a chance at seeing a sub-boss for Mecha or Sand. It's unlikely, but if there is one for the two, I think it'd be Sand, as Mecha kinda has Metal General as its counterpart. But in regards to the true arena, we kinda need to bring up the elephant in the room. A lot of you know this is coming, it's Galactonite. We saw him in the original game as a hidden boss in the true arena, but as of right now in regards to Kirby's connected narrative, we have not seen Galactonite since he was absorbed and transformed into Morphonite in Star Allies. We've only seen Morphonite one other time in this game's story in Forgotten Land, where he absorbed Forgo's soul. So maybe we'll see Galactus' first appearance in Star Allies? Or we'll end up seeing Morphonite again as the last hidden boss fight. Galactonite is one of my favorite characters in Kirby, so if he spontaneously came back out of the blue with no context, I'd be very happy. But regardless, Morphonite is still a really cool villain, or I'm not going to get into that actually. Morphonite is still a really cool character, so I would like to see either or appear. It's guaranteed one of them is going to show up, but it's just a question of who. And lastly, we can move on to the final topic being pause screen descriptions. Pause screen descriptions have been a decently important factor when taking Kirby's lore and narrative into consideration. It serves as a major world building portion of the game that players can access if they choose. You're able to press pause and read a small tidbit on the boss you're fighting. If you're fighting a boss in general and you end up pressing pause, the first screen that pops up will be a small tidbit on the boss you're fighting. This has been an important feature for figuring out whether or not certain aspects are canon to Kirby's story, or it's just a neat little tidbit of information about the boss you're fighting. They've appeared in almost every Kirby game to date, with the more notable game they've been excluded from was Forgotten Land. None of these pause screen descriptions were present in Forgotten Land at all, but thankfully the collectible capsules kind of filled the void of that, as collecting those capsules gave you a brief description of the statue you've collected. So in regards to these, I'm hoping to see them back in Return to Dreamland Deluxe, so how would they remove them now, you know? They were in the original, so I have a good feeling that they're gonna come back in Deluxe. And with that, we conclude this short but sweet video. Those are my final hopes, predictions, wishes, you name it for Return of Dreamland Deluxe. If you're as excited as I am, then feel free to share your wishes and hopes in the comments as well. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts, as in the previous video, I've received a lot of comments that discussed some people's wishes and hopes, which kind of inspired me to make this video. So by you going out and commenting your own ideas, I may make another video about that. We're close to a month out from launch, so I'm starting to get a little excited about this game. Regardless, if you want to see more Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe content, then feel free to subscribe, as when the game comes out, I'm going to be posting a lot more about this game. And with that, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the future, and yeah, that's all I gotta say. This is Xord64, signing off.